Today on What Old Authors Get to Get Away With, uh, I would like to go all the way back to the beginning uh, with Homer's Odyssey. One of the things that I find that he has going for him that a modern author would be scrutinized, taken apart for, is the fact that it really does not have a lot of internal self-consistency. If you read it and try to put it in a more chronological order, why does all the magic always seem to happen not when the author is telling it in present tense, not to anybody other than Odysseus, and not in a way that leaves any marks, trailable, or evidence that another character in the story can see? And it, it shows up because everything that happens with the Cyclops, the Sirens, witches, going to the underworld, all of that, uh, Calypso, all of that happens via flashback that we are told from Odysseus, and none of the other characters in the story are there to witness it, to verify it. None of the other, you know, nobody else lives, you know, through Odysseus's crew that can justify these monsters, demons, you know, the fact that gods interact directly with people. And, I mean, it would be one thing if that was, you know, the whole story and you just had to believe it, but then, because it then moves into the present tense with Odysseus returning to Ithaca, and you see actively how Odysseus works, moves, interacts, there's almost nothing magical from that point on. Which is a huge, which is a very large leap from there's Cyclopses and Poseidon can curse people to now, I mean, the most magical thing that Athena could do once he gets back to Ithaca is maybe help his disguise, which is not that magical. I mean, nobody's seen him in so long, the human memory. I mean, his son never, you know, had met him, he left as a baby. His wife would have trouble just, you know, cognitively remembering him because there are no photographs. Uh, it's debatable whether there would be an accurate enough painting of what he would look like. Plus, after 20 years, he would, you know, physically look different. And so, that's the only magic that really happens once he gets back home, and we're following it in the present which really calls into the question all the magic that happened in his flashbacks which is a major which is a major thing which is you know this world that Homer's building isn't consistent upon itself you know people like to criticize things like Star Trek because in one episode they can beam through the shield and then in another episode they can't or you know uh, Quantum can do this here and, you know, for Data, and Seven of Nine has a different answer for Quantum, <sighs> for some kind of Quantum-related thing, techno babbly thing, and people like to, you know, really pick apart, you know, Star Trek for, you know, for that, whereas Homer, one of the, you know, one of the founders of the Western canon, can't even keep a consistent story in one epic. And so I just, I view that as such a cheat that he gets to have that we modern people, that, you know, us modern writers don't. And I, I you know, I'm a little jealous. Um, the other one that he re that really kind of irks me, and, you know, I'm not the first one, but the fact that it ends with such a Danis Machina ending of there's not an organic ending to the conflict it is purely Athena coming down from the heavens and stopping the cycle of violence which is just you know you can't do that I mean imagine if the Lord of the Rings movies ended you know with just the creator you know descending it said Sauron no Hobbits, yes, and everybody's at peace. Um, I mean, that just would not be a very satisfying movie as opposed to, you know, following the personal struggles of Frodo all the way to their natural conclusion of him throwing the ring into the fire and then you get back 
and then you you know follow him back, and then he's you know personally changed. That's a stronger narrative. But Homer gets away gets to get away with you know the the goddess fixed it, which just kind of irks me that he gets that convenience that you know a modern writer wouldn't. And at the same time, it explains why you know modern writers. Um, probably pick up those habits to begin with because you know in in various schools high schools college classes we have to read these that you know if you see you know if you hear history's greatest author do something and then you try to emulate it but then when your version of it is you know ripped apart for doing the same thing that he does you know in your own way um, it makes it very confusing, very hard to write, and so I think that's you know, you know they get away, you know he gets away with such, you know, and I I hate, I hate to keep using this word, cheat because it just it makes storytelling so much easier. Okay, I have to not use the word cheat so much. Oh, God.